When working with large data sets in Excel, some functions and formulas can seriously impact calculation speed and grind your file to a halt. In this video, we'll put popular conditional functions like sumifs, dsum, and sum product through their paces against one another to see which is fastest. We'll also test lookup functions, dynamic arrays, and dynamic ranges, including the new trim range function and trim reference dot operator. And we'll uncover some little known tricks for optimizing formulas for faster workbook performance. You can download the Excel file from a link in the video description and follow along. And stick around to the end because I've got a tool you can use to run your own speed tests and identify problem formulas so you can fix them once and for all. Before we start, as a side note, I'll be testing these functions on a PC with an Intel i5 9600K CPU at 3.7 gigahertz with 24 gig of RAM. Okay, let's start with one of the most common tasks and that's aggregating values based on conditions using sum ifs and its equivalents, dsum, sum product, and sum with filter. The results may surprise you. I've got over 110,000 rows of data to sum, so a decent amount. And I've got multiple criteria, which is where the type is level one, and the dates are greater than or equal to the 1st of Jan 2021 and less than or equal to the 31st of March 2021. Now the speed here is recorded in milliseconds, so one thousandths of a second. And you can see that Excel is super fast to calculate with all formulas calculating in well under a second. I've timed both the initial calculation, which happens when formulas are first entered, and the recalculation, which occurs when there's a change that affects a formula's inputs. The first three formulas returned very close times, but there's something interesting happening between the two sum ifs, which I'll come to. The first function is dsum, which I covered in a video recently, and quite a few people asked how fast it was compared to sum ifs. Well, you can see here that it's pretty much the same, even when using whole column references like we have here. Now, when comparing the two sum ifs, the second sum ifs formula returns the same result, but the time is 50% slower than the first sum ifs. And that's because sum ifs takes the first condition and applies it to all the data, and then passes that subset of data to the next criteria range, which further filters the data that's passed on to the next criteria range, and so on. If we look in the first sum ifs, the first criteria, is the type that's level one. And if we look at the drop down here, you can see there are nine levels. Now, level one only accounts for 29% of the records. So in this formula, we've reduced the data that's been passed onto criteria range two by 71%. Whereas the second sum ifs, I placed the date filters first. And the first date filter is greater than or equal to the 1st of Jan 2021. If we look at the dates, we can see all of our data is greater than or equal to the 1st of Jan 2021. So there's no efficiency gained there. It's not until the next criteria where we look at data less than or equal to the 31st of March 2021 that we filter out any data for sum if to pass to the next criteria range. So the takeaway here is optimize sum ifs by placing the most restrictive condition first and so on. And the next formula uses the filter function to extract data for sum and this was suggested a few times as an alternative to dsum, but as you can see, it's more than three times slower. Similarly, sum product is also much slower than dsum and sum ifs. Of course, let's put it in perspective. We're talking fractions of a second slower. So nothing we'd notice when working in a file. But if your files are having performance issues and you have a lot of these formulas in your file, then they'd be something to test. One of the benefits of using the dsum function over sum ifs is it allows you to specify both AND criteria and OR criteria. For example, in the criteria table here, we want to sum the amounts where the type is level 1 and the dates are greater than or equal to 1st of Jan 2021 and less than or equal to 31st of March 2021 or where the type is level 2 and the dates are the same. If we look at the dsum formula, you can see it is very succinct and easy to write, whereas the sum ifs must be daisy chained together because each sum ifs criteria are treated as and. So this sum ifs gets the data for the first row of criteria, and the next sum ifs gets the data for the second row of the criteria table. 
Interestingly, D sum and sum Fs are on par in terms of speed, but I think you'll agree D sum is much neater. Now the second sum Fs places the type filter at the end, so we get slower count times here. And again, sum with filter and sum product are considerably less efficient, but nothing we'd notice when working with only a few of these formulas. So far the formulas we've looked at bar one have referenced the table range, but what happens if we reference whole columns or dynamic ranges? Stripping out the conditions, I've just performed a sum of the amount column. And as a benchmark, the first formula references the table range using the structured reference. Comparing that to the whole column reference, there's nothing in it. The new trim range function used here to remove empty rows is also on par, as is the new trim ref dot operator. A suggestion I got a couple of times when I revealed the new trim range and trim ref dot operator was to use two col to trim empty rows, but as you can see, it's considerably slower. But again, these are milliseconds, so it wouldn't be noticeable unless you used a lot of these formulas. Some product with whole column references is comparatively inefficient. Unlike some and some ifs, some product can't identify and eliminate empty rows as efficiently. And we can see that by comparing the sum product that only references the table cells, returning a time that's six times faster, albeit still slower than the sum formulas. Some other common ways we can reference dynamic ranges is using offset and index, and both of these formulas return similar calc times. So the takeaway here is to avoid whole column references when using sum product, and two col is not the best option for dynamic ranges if you have a lot of these formulas. If you'd like to master Excel formulas like these, check out my advanced Excel formulas course. We'll dive deep into powerful functions and advanced techniques helping you work smarter and faster in Excel. It comes with real world practice questions and support and mentoring from me personally. It's perfect for anyone serious about boosting their productivity. Okay, the next set of formulas that were renowned for causing performance issues in Excel are lookups. We'll compare VLOOKUP, index and match, and the new XLOOKUP, looking at both the exact range and dynamic ranges. If we look at the data here, we can see each formula is looking up over 107,000 rows of data, and we can see the results here. Again, these are milliseconds, so each scenario is calculating in well under a second. I think you'll agree that's extremely fast. The first three formulas are standard lookups that simply return the results on a cell-by-cell -cell basis for the exact range of data. That is, they don't allow the formulas to automatically copy down if we add new data to the table. We can see that VLOOKUP, INDEX and MATCH, and XLOOKUP all return similar times. However, when we return XLOOKUP as a spelled array, it's 30% faster, so that's something to keep in mind. Next, I looked at dynamic range XLOOKUP formulas that automatically detect the last row in the table, which means that if I add new data, let's just add a row here, you'll see these formulas automatically copy down. Now they all reference cells B4 to the very last row in the table. You can see that here, 1048576. So virtually the whole column. And they were all very close in terms of speed at well under one second. So suffice to say, you can use any lookup formula in Excel 2019 onwards without too much concern for performance which is thanks to the work the Excel team did back in 2018 to improve lookup calc efficiency. To run these speed tests, I used an Excel add-in developed by fellow Microsoft MVP Charles Williams called Fast Excel, and the Calc Range button in the add-in enables you to time how long formulas take to calculate. Now the results will vary each time you run it depending on other tasks running on your PC. So you can see here we got a time of 101 milliseconds versus the last time I ran it, 92 milliseconds, but that's negligible in the scheme of things. But that's not all fast Excel can do. If you have files that are slow to open or calculate, the drill down profiler analyzes your workbook and finds the slowest worksheets and formulas, providing actionable insights to streamline even the most complex spreadsheets. I tested it on the workbook for this video. Let's take a look at the results. In the first sheet, fast Excel profiles the workbook each measure has a note with an explanation. Now, there's a lot of information here, but the areas in your workbook that need your attention get highlighted in orange. For example, we can see here that the aggregation formula sheet has a used range waste of 
And if we hover over the cell, we get the tooltip that explains this represents cells in the used range beyond the last row and column containing data or formulae as a percentage of the cells in the used range. Now we can dig deeper by looking at the profiles of individual sheets. Here we're looking at the aggregation formula sheet and it profiles all the formulas in the sheet and orders them based on how long they take to calculate. And we can see the first one is sum with filter in cell J11, which accounts for 21% of the calculation time. So we can focus on improving that formula first, followed by sum product in cell J12 and so on. You'll find a link in the video description where you can get a free trial for the fast Excel add-in so you can fix slow workbooks once and for all. But don't waste time trying to rewrite formulas using Excel's tiny formula bar that has no formatting, no debugging tools, or real-time error detection. Instead, check out this video on how to get Excel's new free advanced formula environment that makes writing and debugging formulas easy. I'll see you there.